Hope you like this, my fourth video. I like to take trips and find places that combine recreation with history, science, nature, or some other aspect that makes things more interesting. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment. My locations will not always be limited to Connecticut, although for such a small state, we do contain many fine places to visit. Okay, today we are visiting the John Brown Historic Site in Torrington, Connecticut. Like his father before him, John Brown was an abolitionist, becoming one by the time he was a teenager. He thought slavery was immoral and decided to actively fight against it. After the brutal murder of an anti-slavery Presbyterian minister in 1837, Brown declared, Here before God, in the presence of these witnesses, from this time, I consecrate my life to the destruction of slavery. In 1855, Brown went to Kansas to help his two sons, who lived there, fight to make Kansas a free state. Brown got involved in the violence and took part in a counterattack against pro-slavery settlers called the Potawatomi Massacre in 1856. It ended in five pro-slavery settlers being killed. One of his sons was later killed in the fighting, but in 1858, Kansas entered the Union as a free state. After that, Brown became involved in leading raids across the Midwest to free slaves. On October 16, 1859, Brown and his men began operations around Harper's Ferry and successfully captured the Federal Armory there. But on October 17th, President Buchanan ordered a company of Marines, led interestingly by Robert E. Lee, the future Confederate general, to march into Harper's Ferry. When Brown refused to surrender, the Marines attacked, capturing him and all the abolitionist fighters. Brown was tried in November and found guilty of treason. He was hung on December 2nd, 1859, at the age of 59. Brown was buried on his farm in Mount Elba, New York, which is now owned by uh, New York State and is it's uh, and is a National Historic Landmark called the John Brown State Historic Site. Now we'll take a little flight over John Brown's birthplace. You will see that this is hilly country and not good for large-scale farming like in the South. New England was a land of mostly small family farms, which, especially in colonial times, were not very efficient or profitable. The terrain was often rocky with poor topsoil because of the glaciers that had scoured the soil from the land and pushed it into the ocean. You have only to think of Long Island, which is a vast moraine made up of rock and soil that was piled there by the glaciers and which came originally from New England. Young farmers like the Browns often moved west in search of better land. The small farms and the small businesses that dominated the New England economy meant that slavery was not usually an efficient form of labor. That was an important factor for why people in the northern states were able to so easily take the moral high ground when it came to slavery. Even so, slavery actually still existed in Connecticut until only a short time before the start of the Civil War in 1860, although there were very few slaves in the later years. This was because of laws that only slowly ended the practice. So let's go down now and take a look at John Brown's farm. And you'll see even a cursory look will show you that that farmland is not very rich. Now we're at the birthplace of John Brown, the abolitionist. He was born at the site here in May 9th, 1800. There's an explanation here about it. Uh, the house itself was burnt down about over 100 years ago, around 1900. He was born here, he spent the first few years of his life here, then his family and he moved out to Ohio. Uh, but when he was ready to go to school, I guess Ohio was still very rugged out there. And so he came back to Connecticut and went to school here in Connecticut, in Torrington. Uh, he didn't finish schooling, something happened, and he eventually, uh, I believe, bought a farm in New York, and was living up in New York. The house itself was destroyed, uh, burned down around 1900, 
and so you just have a field here where the house was and the stone walls and the property now I believe belongs to the Torrington Historical Society and there's a stone over here it says he's born May 9th 1800 and I took a drone video so you'll see that of the area it's all wooded now with a few farms and people living in the area it's very rural which I guess it always has been this is in western Torrington up in the hills uh, maybe about five or six miles from downtown Torrington okay we're going to walk up onto the property and here's a stone here commemorating John Brown he was actually buried in I think in New York by where his farm was where he was living at the time so there's nothing here except memories I don't see any grave sites so I guess no one was no one was buried in this area and his family he only lived there for about five years when he was young and when he came back I don't know where he lived somewhere in Torrington maybe at the school where he was going to again this is all just wooded now somebody's been cutting down some trees probably part of the property all right within the outside the stone wall and the main property there's another looks like an old stone foundation maybe but looks more maybe it was an old barn rather than a house it didn't look like good enough for a house and, but we don't know it's covered with moss now why we're about to go on the John Brown Trail. It's about a three-quarter mile loop. I'll start. Um, I was here before. I didn't see well marked, but I talked with a woman from the local area, and she says it is well marked. You have to look for marks on the trees, so I'm going to be looking for marks on the trees. Now, the lady mentioned that mentioned that there were yellow tags on the trees, and I do see that in the, up over here. All right, so we'll follow this a little bit and see where it goes. John Brown Trail. We'll follow these for a while. Okay, we're still on the trail here. It's Again, it is well marked at this point. Uh, this part of the forest doesn't look like it was ever farmed. There are stones and rocks all over, which is typical of New England. And here's a nice big glacial erratic. Uh, it's hard to tell what it is, but it's probably some kind of granite. Got a lot of green lichen on it. I'm just going around in a circle here. You see all the rocks. So this, uh, the brown farm, they didn't extend their farming out to this area, which is just a few hundred yards at most from the farm itself. So they could have used this as pasture land, I guess. A couple of little bridges there over some water. Not much of a stream, more of a almost a little mini swamp. All right, got a nice sunny trail here. Still a little bit of ice and snow on the ground. Uh, so so far the trail is pretty good, but you have to leave to the left, and we'll be seeing where this ends up. That's a pleasant walk all in all. Okay, this is interesting. We're at one end of the trail here. It ends at the road, but then it also continues that way toward the John Brown uh, Heritage Site. But let me get all onto the road here for a second and see exactly where this is. The John Brown Site was actually about, looks like about a good 150 yards down the road. All right, I'm going to go on the trail and see where it continues to. I guess it goes to the property somehow. All right, we're back at the John Brown Herod site. Uh, this is the last marker I see, but the problem I had is that there's no marker maybe about 50 yards away. I really can't I barely see it in the tree over there. So coming in this direction, you don't see anything. And you don't know that this is the trail. And that's the mistake that I made. Uh, so if you come here, you want to go to the right. As soon as you're at that tra the map, you take a right along this grassy area, which is just at the edge of the historic site of the house. And then you get on that, on that trail. Or you could do what I did finally, as I 
went in, I took a left, and you could still don't see any trail markers, but at least there's a trail there. And this is the way it is. The trail is not marked well at the beginning, unfortunately. Because that is the way you would go, or you would come in this way. Up over here. And follow this trail. And it goes to the left. See, there is a trail marker here. But the way it's set up, it looks like you would turn right. Which is a mistake I made, because the trail marker is over there. So you would assume that the trail is that direction. There's a little mild trail that way. And that's how I got lost. But here, the actual trail is over here and about 50, 30 or 40 yards ahead. You can barely see it. There's a trail marker. And that's the trail you would take. So don't make that mistake. So that completes our little tour of John Brown's birthplace. It's worth a look. And the hike on the trail is easy enough, though there are roots and rocks to get around. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. More to come. So if you've enjoyed this video and my other videos that I've done, uh, please subscribe and hit that little bell there too so you get um, notices when I get new videos in. I'm trying to do about one a week. Take care.